Welcome everyone to another video. This is Shannon with Black Sheep House. We're gonna start by mixing up some one-step paint. This is my famous recipe, and it's one part paint, and then I'll get to the other ingredients in a second. I know you'll try to click out if I tell you everything right now. I've been seeing these pinks and mauves everywhere, and a friend of mine, she does pink a lot, and I get so inspired, and I've seen it, and I'm like, okay, I've got to do a pink dresser, and then also the Barbie movie comes out this month, and so pink was on my mind, and I was really excited to try this out. This is more of like a pinkish tan color. The next part is primer, so you have paint, you have primer, and these are equal parts. Does the primer lighten the paint? Yes, it does. So what I do is I get the shade darker on the little paint, you know, the little paint things at the hardware store. And it usually works out for me. Not always, but it usually works out. And then we're going to go with one part polycrylic. Many people have asked, because I've done this recipe uh, so many times, and I usually use water-based polyurethane, and many of you have said, hey, can you use polycrylic? It is a less expensive option at most stores, and so I started using polycrylic, and I like it just as much, so it's a great combination. As far as which brand of paint, primer, and uh polycrylic or water-based polyurethane that you go with just make sure all of your products are all water-based and also just depending on your project right like so I use sticks primer if my project is the kind that's got more of a slick surface I will use a bleed through blocking primer uh, like kills or something water-based if I'm doing something that might have some bleed through. And I just keep some sand and seal on hand or some spray uh, shellac on hand if I get bleed through generally. Now I've got my uh, sweet husband in here. He's doing the spray work for me. I'm just sitting pretty. This is so easy, right? Like <laughs> having somebody else do it. But he's just, um, he's such a, a good sprayer. And so I didn't want to get on here and, and do a sloppy job and, you know, give you guys a bad example. He's, he's the one who, if we do spray work, he's the one that does it. And he just uses this Harbor Freight sprayer and we use an air compressor that's a pretty good size um, air compressor. It looks like R2-D2. It's kind of a, a little bit larger air compressor. And then he does dilute the paint with water. And I'll show you that here in a second. He's spraying inside a Wagner spray tent. And he does about four coats by the time it's all said and done. So to rewind a little bit, I'll show you this... Um, pneumatic sprayer it's from harbor freight and he said he adds in for our one step paint recipe he adds in 20 to 30 percent water and the great thing about doing the one step paint and when you're spraying is you don't have to switch out you know primer clear coat all that stuff you can just keep adding the same paint mixture in and just keep going you don't have to stop
this thing's looking really great. I'm super happy with how this color has turned out once it's dried. I did want to show you what I would do if I don't have a sprayer. I think a lot of people don't have sprayers. And so if you are watching this video and you're like, dang it, I don't have a sprayer and I don't want to spray or it's rainy or whatever, you can do the brush and roll method. And I do this all the time on the channel. You just brush on the paint in a thin layer and then you go over it with a foam roller. This gives a really smooth finish, almost as good as spraying. It's also a great way to do touch-ups if you have bleed through and you needed to spray some shellac on there and then recoat the side. And like, I actually, that's how, to, that's why I ended up filming this part because <laughs> I had some bleed through and had to spray some shellac and then go over it with this. So it was a great opportunity to show you guys how to do the brush and roll. And hey, it's real life, you know? I like the Wiz brand foam rollers and if you notice you get some bubbles in your finish because there's clear coat mixed in with this one step paint recipe so you might get more bubbles than a normal paint and what I do is I just wait a minute for them to dry a little bit and then I just go over it one more time and roll. I know a lot of people do things differently but that's I'm just telling you what I do. I just roll it a whole bunch of times but if I am working in a section like say the top of the dresser I will roll that whole section one more time and that's the one that can get a little streaky on you if you try to roll it while it is uh it's while it's a little bit too dry and you get that flashing so you know while it's still wet you know but it's drying i guess that's a good way to put it but so i also had to repair some on this drawer and i meant to do it before brad sprayed it but i didn't get around to it so i had the pieces in there ready to do the repair it's just these little plastic uh Ken line drawer guides I think and I'll make sure to link those in the description I've done a few videos on this type of drawer repair as well and I'll link those also it's pretty common for these um like slightly newer dressers I guess there's some time I don't know they're made recently you know it's not vintage and the plastic is just uh it gets broken these drawers the plastic um, keeps it from pulling like out of the hole right so like when you pull on it it stops you and so to get the drawer out sometimes you end up breaking them because it's such a bit of a feat to like yank it out all right guys let's take a look at the before beautiful solid wood dresser with some big dings that needed to be filled with bondo and now a beautiful pink dresser to be loved and cherished for many more years to come thanks for watching i will see you guys in the next video bye